Welcome to this Week in Review. You know, it's been about a week and the midterms are over and I have found multitudes of people are still battling discouragement and disillusionment. Well, I'll tell you this, I want to bring you some encouragement and a heavenly perspective. And as a Christian, we can never get cynical and we should battle off any discouragement at this time because we know who is the sovereign God we serve and he has purposes and they're not in any way going to be overcome. All right, now let me tell you this. I want you to know that if you will stay in the radical middle, you can stay strong. If you'll stay in the radical middle in dealing with the midterms and in your entire life, I promise you, you can stay strong. Let me explain to you what I mean. First of all, don't be discouraged at this time. God is ruling and he can work all things together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And he wants you encouraged. But that doesn't mean that we don't face brutal realities. It's discouraging some of the things that took place last week. You know, I am in, uh, I'm not a pessimist. I'm an optimist, but I'm also a realist. And I look and I see what's taken place. But again, I believe our call is to stay in the radical middle. What does that mean? Well, there was a book uh, years ago that came out called The Quest for the Radical Middle, and it was the history of the vineyard movement. My wife and I were, were part in Franklin here of the Franklin Vineyard. And John Wimber was the pioneer and the leader. And this book talked about some of the mistakes and lessons that could be learned from the vineyard. And the quest was, we need to stay in the radical middle. And what do I mean by that? Well, there are truths in the Bible that have to be kept in tandem. And they seem, uh, you know, self kind of, in a sense, contradictory. Uh, maybe you know what I mean, you know, uh, human responsibility versus the sovereignty of God. If you have sovereignty of God without human responsibility and, and free will and choice, then you know what you have? Fatalism. But if you have human responsibility without the sovereignty of God, you have humanism. It's both. And they're friends. And uh, that's what Charles Spurgeon said. Somebody said, what do you make of human responsibility and the sovereignty of God? How do you reconcile them? He said, I never try to reconcile friends. Now you have, you know, d d d the Christian life works and faith. Faith without works is dead, but they blend together. But there is a proper precedent there. Also, the kingdom of God. It's now, but it's not fully yet. The word. We need to stay focused on the word. And what about the spirit? Well, as they say, all word and no spirit. What is that? You'll dry up. But all spirit and no word, you'll, you'll blow up. We need the word and the spirit and we will grow up. Now, when we look at what happened in the midterms, let's be honest about it. There are some things that can discourage people. And it would be simply this. I saw it as God moving in a way amongst his people that we could have correction in our nation on a dangerous path that we have been on for these past couple years. Now, I, like many, tried to steer clear of saying the big red wave and all of these things. And there were predictions and prophetic words. By the grace of God, I didn't go down that path. But I also didn't want to just say, well, que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. You know, from my writings and all that I do, I encourage people. But you know what? I just got back from California where we had a forum, Dr. Cheon and Lance Walnow and Cindy Jacobs and other leaders, and we were talking about the need to be in the, what, the radical middle. What does that mean? Well, at a time in our nation like now, we can have individuals that say, don't get involved in the political realm. Stay in the realm of prayer, repentance, revival. That's where it's all at. Don't get into this, you know, the whole political realm. But then on the other side, you can have those that go to the side of saying, it's all political, we got to work. And they stay clear almost of what? Christian gospel preaching and the word of God. There's something of a blend and it really is both. The Bible says in Romans 13 that God establishes government. But it's not just government like Adolf Hitler or Mussolini and we're supposed to obey everything that is said contrary to the word of God. No, government is there to what? It's to promote justice but also punish evil. And you can have wicked rulers that don't go down that path. That's what happened in Acts chapter four. You know, when the apostles had to confront and say, whether this be right, you know, when they were told, don't preach the gospel, whether it be right in the eyes of God and man, well, you make the judge, but here's what we're gonna do. 
we're going to keep preaching the gospel. And that's what we need to do. And all of you who know me, man, I've been in ministry 50 years. What has been my priority? What's been number one? I tell people, it's not education. It's not legislation. It's regeneration. Our first and foremost privilege is to be his ambassadors and do what Jesus said, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel. But at the same time, we're to be salt. And salt is to hold back decay. And we are called by Jesus to render to Caesar, to the government, that which is Caesar, and to God, that which is God. And we have a privilege and a sacred duty in our country to elect leaders because when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked rule, the people groan. So when we look at the midterms, you know what? We got to admit, it's an indictment on the state of our nation. I say, you know, how can we have a president in office, a man that is so inept and is promoting so much evil, and there are so many people that are deceived, and they're saying, we don't need to correct, we're content, we can continue on this path, continue on the path, erect economy, what we've seen with gas prices, uh, chaos at the border, what we see with legislation in terms of promoting transgenderism, LGBTQ agenda, um, and, and all of that, the violent crime. I mean, it's all been during these past two years because not of Trump and Putin uh, you know, or COVID, but because of policies and those that have been in office and promoting things that have been ungodly. So it is scary to see the state of our nation. And so what's the solution? Well, first and foremost, proclaiming the gospel, but also declaring the truth. And from a biblical worldview, helping God's people and others understand the design that God has established for marriage and family and the sanctity of life, babies in the womb. Let me give you some good news. You say, Larry, I want to hear some good news. Well, I would say this to you. First of all, we see in this in the midterms, we see the house that uh, conservative, traditional conservatives have taken charge of the House. That's a good thing because you know what? The House of Representatives, what do they have? The power of the purse. So they can stop this uh, insane spending and they have the power of the subpoena. They can begin to investigate and they will do it in things like Hunter Biden and things that have taken place. Well, now with the House in traditional conservative hands, that can be undertaken. In this midterm election, we've seen some major victories. Look across the country. I mean, look what happened in Florida. There's a man that's in the governor. He, it was a landslide victory. I lived in Georgia for 11 years. And you know, the woman that ran there, oh, she had Biden and Oprah Winfrey and everybody on her side. But what happened? She got blown out again. She lost. Same thing with the guy that ran in Texas against the governor. The governor won there, a great man of God. $150 million were spent by these two candidates. Somebody by the name of Beto O'Rourke, you recognize that name, and Stacey Abrams. All that money and both of them, losers once again. You say, well, Larry, some more good news. Well, look at candidates. I grew up in Ohio. A godly man came into office there. What we saw in Florida, the school board. And there's some of the races now that are still going to be settled. Herschel Walker against a man named Warnock uh, in Georgia. And so what are we called to do right now? Well, I like Mario Morello, a friend of mine. He said, look, in what's happened, let's recognize it. But this is not a time to throw in the towel. He said, it's not a time to get bitter, but it's a time to get going and really double up. Eye of the tiger. Remember Rocky? That's what we have to maintain. You look at Abe Lincoln. He lost when he ran for office once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times. And finally, he won for president of the United States. He didn't quit. How about Ronald Reagan, one of the greatest presidents ever? He's one of my heroes. And what happened with him? 1976, he was running for president. He lost out to Gerald Ford. Richard Nixon, he lost. How about Donald Trump? What happened to him the last time around? So we're not going to quit. We're going to stay in the race. Pastors and people, I think you see it. Every vote matters. And it's time not to throw in the towel, but to get in the ring. I'd like to challenge us with this. Let's keep praying. Let's stay involved. Proclaim the gospel. Proclaim truth. And make sure that we are engaged in the process in this nation for righteous leadership. I'm going to put on the screen, I want you to read this. These are the words of Teddy Roosevelt. And that's a man that knew defeat. But he said these words. It's a great closing and it's a challenge to us at this time. Read these words with me. Here's what he said. I love this. He said this. It is not the critic who counts 
not the man who points out how the, uh, the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done what? Better. You know, could have done, you know, them better. But the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, and that's us, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasm, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at this word, oh, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Let's stay strong, and in staying strong, stay in that radical middle. Preach the gospel, proclaim truth, be engaged, be involved, and watch what God's going to be doing in these coming days. Stay strong.